you've tuned in to the 49ers Rush Podcast, and here is your host, John Chapman. All right, 49ers fans, we have an awesome episode for you today. We are going to be going back through John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan's first two drafts and break down every single trade that took place on draft days. Kind of understand, hopefully, a little bit of what goes behind their idea and thinking process and which trades did well and which ones did bad. The big ones we kind of know a lot about. But we're going to go through, break all that down, and then at the end of the episode, we are going to do a complete list, it's going to be a very name heavy, of every single draft prospect that has had an official visit with the San Francisco 49ers. And it is a very long list, whether that was at the Senior Bowl, the Combine, private official work uh, workout, it, it, Pro Day, any of that stuff. So we're going to map all of that out and list that out. So hopefully as we get closer to the draft, one week away, so excited, we will kind of know which pro prospects the 49ers have their eyes on as quote-unquote their guys and what those visits mean so without further ado let's jump straight into this and let's start with 2017 the very first draft for John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan and it started off with the you know a bang we had the number two overall pick and we traded back one spot with the Chicago Bears now this trade has been talked about and detailed so much uh, one, because it's it's such a prolific trade that happened, you know, even though we just moved back one spot, but it turns into kind of an inception three levels deep breakdown. So we're going to spend a lot of time on this first trade because we got so much in return that we traded the picks that we traded for and then traded those picks in the future. So uh, just understand this first trade is going to take a while to break down. And actually, the more I got into all the ins and outs and actual pick values and players and all that kind of stuff, I I liked it a lot more and more. So Right off the bat, the Bears jump up for their quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, who they think is going to be their quarterback of the future. I'm not the biggest Trubisky guy, but you put him on a good team, then I think you're going to be a a decent football team. You know, playing with the best defense in the NFL last year, I think, was awesome. But he's not a guy that's going to really win you games. He's more of a game manager, uh, Alex Smith-type quarterback. Actually, very similar to Alex Smith in how he plays all across the board. So, but let's focus on the 49er side. So what did the 49ers get out of this trade? So number one, we, we dropped back from two to three. We ended up getting the third overall pick, the 67th overall pick, the 111th pick, and then an additional third rounder in the 2018 draft. So two thirds and a 111. So here's a fourth round pick. So here's what happened, and let's go through and let's do all of these. So for the 67th pick, This was an early third rounder. We never used that pick. What we did with that, and again, you're going to see this, we traded like crazy. In his very first year in 2017, John Lynch was one trade away from breaking the all-time NFL draft record for most trades in a single draft. I believe it was seven. He did seven trades total. So the 67th pick we never used. We traded that to the Saints. The Saints jumped up out basically um and we just got rid of that pick for a 2018 second so we gave up a 2017 third and we didn't really get much it back in that for that year we got a seventh round pick that we used on adrian colbert in the 2017 draft but then we pocketed the second round pick which was awesome and that was a later second but if you remember and you're going to see a theme here we didn't have a 2018 second round pick why because we traded that for Jimmy Garoppolo, which everybody was very, very happy with. So this kind of re we, we got this pick, you know, and we just had it sitting there, which is going to be great. And spoiler alert, we're going to trade that second round pick too. Uh, we'll get to that. But we picked up Adrian Colbert and a future second pick for the number 67 pick. Now, let's just pause and let's just <laughs> carry this trade out to its completion because, again, uh, talking about Inception, it's a trade within a trade within a trade. So before we can analyze you know, whether or not we won or quote-unquote lost, it, we've got to keep going. So now let's jump to 2018 with that second-round pick that we got from the Saints. Now the Saints took Alvin Kamara with that pick, who has been absolutely insane, probably a top-five running back in the NFL today. So you, you could say, yeah, the Saints are very, very happy with that trade. Now, if we jump to 2018, 
That same second round pick, which eventually was the number 59 overall pick from the Saints, we traded that again. Um, And that number 59 overall pick and the number 74 third rounder pick to the Washington Redskins. Okay, And what we got back for that was number 44, number 142 of the 2018 draft. So uh, now let's back up and let's focus on just this one small trade here and what each side got. So the Redskins walked away with Darius Geis at pick 59 and Christian Geron, a tackle, at pick 74. So with that second and third pick, they got a running back. You know, he is ACL. He still hasn't played a snap in the NFL, but probably going to be a very good running back again. And Christian Geron, who hasn't had much of an impact. Now, who did the 49ers get? We traded up and got Dante Pettis with that second uh, pick that we got, the number 44 overall. And at pick 142, we got DJ Reed. So uh, definitely one starter, our wide receiver one right now, Dante Pettis. And DJ Reed, who is a Swiss Army knife that can play safety, uh, nickel corner, he could do it all, even probably outside corner, which he did some at Kansas State. So um, we, we have that in place. And what's interesting about this trade, that number 74 pick that we got, that was Chicago's third pick that we traded for by moving back one spot. So in essence, (laughs) we're not finished with this Mitch Trubisky trade yet, but in essence, we got Dante Pettis for dropping back one spot and DJ Reed and Adrian Colbert. So you can see how we, just from dropping from that number two to three spot, we got Solomon Thomas. Now, if we go back to what John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan both said after the trade press conference in 2017, they said, look, We had two players we were comfortable with at pick number two. And those two players were Solomon Thomas and Reuben Foster. And and I hate to even talk about that guy. I get pissed off thinking about it. But their philosophy was, man, if we could fall back one spot and guaranteed to get one of those two guys and just get some extra picks, that's wonderful. And so that's what they did. And and we're going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of this podcast and what that means for today. Now, the 111 pick, so again, let's... The three things that we got, we got number three overall, number 67, number 111, and then that 2018 third. But the number 111, we traded to the Seahawks in the Reuben Foster deal. So let's jump to that Reuben Foster deal. Uh, The Seahawks, they got pick number 34 and pick number 111, okay? We got to jump up and take Reuben Foster. Now, here's the issue with – there's a lot of issues here. The Seahawks then are going to trade out of that 34 spot, and they're going to drop back one spot. But essentially what the Seahawks got was Tedrick Thompson and Malik McDowell, and we got Reuben Foster. There's no winners here in this trade. Both teams lost ridiculous. Malik McDowell never played in one game for the Seattle Seahawks as a high – you know, the number 35th overall pick. Whereas Ruben Foster definitely played considerable for the 49ers when he wasn't hurt or suspended. Then he was cut. The NFL recently announced there's no additional suspension. So Washington's going to get uh, Ruben Foster. He's going to be playing relatively cheap, whatever. Uh, Whatever. I I don't want to talk about that. But it's so interesting just all the intricacies behind this one trade and how it just started to stockpile all of this. So in summary of this one trade, we fell back one spot and got Solomon Thomas, which, you know, he, we played him out of position. He definitely has not lived up to a number three overall pick or a first round pick at all. And it doesn't mean that his evaluation is over. If the 49ers do draft another edge like Bosa or Josh Allen, then finally Solomon Thomas should be able to play his actual position, interior defensive line, which is what he played all at Stanford. Over 80% of his snaps were interior. So hopefully that happens and he can succeed. If we do go somebody like Quinnen Williams, I hope we trade Solomon Thomas for anything. I take a fourth just because I don't want to continue to ruin his career. He is not an edge player in a 4-3. He's just not. And if the 49ers can't see that, um, you know, th- then that is a huge strike against us. We we are notorious for playing people out of their position, which we'll see a little bit later in this podcast. We're going to talk about some other trades where we tried to do the same thing. But so we fall back one spot. We get Solomon. We picked up um, two-thirds and a fourth, and then we turned one-third into a second – Then we traded that second and one of the thirds we got in the thing for Pettis. 
Then the fourth that we got, we used that as ammunition to jump up and get Foster. So uh, just by moving back one pick, I, I got to say this is one of the better moves that John Lynch has made as general manager, just uh, accumulating so much that he can move around and kind of pick what he wants in this draft and give him ammunition to trade around and get the guys he covers. Now the problem is, is whether that's evaluation of the talent or if it's just, you know, the players. Of the, I think Adrian Colbert as a seventh, exceptional. Uh, no issues with that. Dante Pettis as the number 44 overall player, uh, yeah, that was a great pick. He should have went in the first round. Reuben Foster, the talent was there. It was just character and health concerns. We missed on that one. So you take all that and you say, man, I got to grade that trade very, very positively. Now, then we get some very poor decisions after this, and they both involve running backs. So uh, Capri Bibbs, this is a separate deal altogether. The Broncos get a future 2018 fourth rounder, and again, we're talking about the 2017 draft, so that's whenever I'm saying future draft pick. This is 2017. We get Capri Bibbs and a fifth rounder, number 177 overall, that we're going to pick Trent Taylor with, which is a great pick. So Capri Bibbs and Trent Taylor. The Broncos got a future fourth rounder, which they use for Deshaun Hamilton, who is going to be their slot, uh, starting slot receiver with insane upside. Deshaun Hamilton was one of my favorite players coming out of the draft last year just because his routes and his hands are amazing, and they love him in Denver. So who won that trade? You know, I, I think you have to go with the Broncos just because Deshaun Hamilton is a starter at play in and play out for them. Trent Taylor is more, he's going to be rotating a little bit more than what he used to be. I love Trent Taylor, but he's a first down guy. So uh, what I mean by that is you put him in on third downs and he just goes to the sticks and catches the ball. And you use him in short yardage as that slot guy whenever you need four yards and he's going to do that. Deshaun Hamilton I think that he is a top-tier wide receiver as far as sophomore wide receivers go. Uh, he's going to be a play-in-and-play-out starter. Uh, Capri Bibbs, we waived him before the season even started. He never played one down for the 49ers, so that was an absolute bust of a trade. I don't understand why we did it in the first place, to be honest with you. Um, and then we double down. We make another terrible draft day trade. We move up to get Joe Williams running back out of Utah. And we were picking at 143, and we said, nope, we can't wait. 22 spots for Joe Williams. So we packaged the number 161 and 143 to the Colts, and we got number 121. So we picked Joe Williams, never had one carry for us in a game. Um, he cut, put on the practice squad, then we brought him back, then we waved him. Yeah, I don't think he'll ever play in an NFL game for the rest of his life. Um, he's just not... Uh, he just wasn't a worker, and you know he quit on his team in Utah, and I know there were some very strict situations, but Kyle Shanahan loved this guy. This was his pound-the-table guy, and it just was a total, absolute failure and a bust. Now, what makes it even worse is if we look at who the Colts got at 143, they got Marlon Mack. <laughs> so we could have waited and got Marlon Mack, who has over 1,600 scrimmage yards in his two years despite missing times with health concerns. He is a... He's he's a starting running back. Um, so we could have had him and also Anthony Walker with the 161 pick. The Colts got him. So that's the 2017 draft. Now let's jump real quick to the 2018 draft. And we already kind of broke down a couple of the trades involving that, whether that's Dante Pettis, um, things like that. So I'm going to kind of skip over that. Before the draft, you know, we signed Daniel Kilgore to a decent deal as our center. But once free agency finished... And we were able to bring over Western Richburg. We were able to basically give away Daniel Kilgore for free. And what we did really was just free up that contract. And instead of cutting him, we allowed him to keep that contract, which benefited him, which I respect. And we gave away the number 223 pick for the 227 pick to the Dolphins. So you can see we moved back for, or we moved up four picks in the seventh round to get Kilgore. That's kind of what we did. Not really a big deal. And this is, let me say it this way. This was a favor to Daniel Kilgore. And again, at the press conference, this is what John Lynch said. He said, you know, in 2017 draft, we were just plugging holes. 
who can play for us now? We need guys that can just get out there and play. And we led the NFL in rookie snaps in 2017. Then 2018, the mindset completely shifted. John Lynch said, you know, we were just trying to plug holes in 2017. Now what we're trying to do is we are trying to find cornerstones that fit our scheme and will be long-term cornerstones for exactly what we want. Western Richburg, even though he had a very rough year, you know, his knee injury is well-documented. He played basically hurt all year, but he played awful. However, that is the type of player that we want at center. Very mobile, uh, blocks great and space a very zone heavy blocking scheme smaller guy and Daniel Kilgore just wasn't a scheme fit and we see the same thing with our next offensive lineman Trent Brown you know we go out and we draft Mike McGlinchey number nine overall one of the steals of the absolute draft if we if we were to redraft today uh Mike McGlinchey's going top five that's how great of a tackle he was he was insane now the 49ers for this trade we trade away Trent Brown to the Patriots and a fifth round pick, number 143. What we get back is a third round pick, number 95, we use on Tarver- Tarverius Moore. Safety out of Southern Miss. Southern Miss. Now, we move him day one to corner. And, you know, we, ha- we still have a major need at safety. But, you know, we put Tarverius Moore at corner, and he's a project player. He got in some, got injured. Absolutely no, there's no confidence in this guy. I don't want to say he's a bust after one year, but we're playing somebody that has shown insane progress and insane potential at a safety position, and now what do we got? We still have a hole at safety. I don't understand why we're not giving this kid a chance back there, but that's what it is. So what did the Pats do? They took Jawan Bentley with that number 143 pick, and Trent Brown was their starting tackle, left tackle, and what the Super Bowl, then let him go. And because of the way the Patriots manipulate compensation picks, they're going to receive another third round pick for Trenton Brown. So if, if we would have, I mean, you could, you can do the what if game, whatever, but definitely the Patriots won this trade. Uh, I like Tarverius more. He's very raw, but we have to find a way to get him on the field. You know, corner's still a concern, and he's been there, um, and safety is still a concern as well. So then we all obviously have the Dante Pettis, trade but I don't want to talk too much about that just because we already broke it down so here's what I want to do what I want to do now is try to take that mindset that we saw in 2017 and apply it to 2019 and we can see this whenever we go through the visits here in a second if the 49ers have three players close to each other in that top tier so in 2017 they had two right Reuben Foster and Solomon Thomas. Well, if they have three players in that tier, which I do, or maybe more, uh, Nick Bosa, Quinnen Williams, Josh Allen, and Brian Burns. Uh, I know a lot of people are Brian Burns, and he kind of fits that edge uh, that we need. And we've had him in several different times. You know, we had him in for a private workout. So if that's the case, then don't be surprised if the 49ers try to trade back uh, a few spots to try to accumulate some more value, just like we did in 2017. And again, remember, we already don't have a second round pick for 2020. I, this is a problem because it's we love second round picks. And Kyle Lynch and John Shanahan, uh, I just uh, Kyle Lynch. That's funny. Maybe I should start that. Just mix their names. Sorry, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. They move in the second round. And they, they've done this both their drafts. And the fact that we don't have a second rounder next year is problematic. So what if we do drop back and pick up one of those in that D because we lost the second in the D4 trade. So here's what my mindset is. If we look at the other teams that are around, let's say there's three players that we value. And I think most of 49ers Twitter would agree on the three. Uh, now the order gets weird. But Nick Bosa, Quinnen Williams, and Josh Allen. For me, my order would go Bosa, Allen, Williams. But a lot of people have Williams number one. I have no problem with that. He's a top-tier player, and those are my top three players of the draft. Not even just 49ers need. Just my big board goes Bosa, Allen, Williams. I, I Any of them I'd be very, very happy with. So if that's the case, let's say Arizona goes quarterback, or even if they don't go quarterback, and you have four guys, you got Brian Burns in there, I think Oakland is going to want to move up. And the main reason why is they want edge. (laughs) They have a stud defensive tackle already. 
and they have a ridiculous amount of draft capital. So they could be moving up for Bosa or Josh Allen. So if Bosa goes first, they could be trying to move up for Josh Allen, or if Bosa goes first, they could be moving up for Kyler Murray. The rumors are out there that they are very high on Kyler Murray. If Kyler Murray goes one, well, if they're wanting an edge player, San Francisco and the Jets both want edge guys too. So it's possible for Arizona to go Kyler Murray, San Fran to go Bosa, and then the Jets to go Josh Allen. Then Oakland is sitting there with a top four pick, and there's no edge guy that is worthy of that pick there. They'd probably go Brian Burns or another position. But why not, if you are the Oakland Raiders, trade up and guarantee? You know, you let Khalil Mack out the door. You've got to replace him in one of the heaviest edge <laughs> drafts in in the past decade you've got to do it so here's just a couple trade scenarios with the Raiders at four that I think could happen you know again the Raiders have three first round picks and the 35th pick you know at the top of the second round right ahead of us so how about this you know the Raiders get the second pick and the 49ers get number four and number 27 so we're getting we're still going to get one of those top tier players that we love at four Whoever falls, if that's Josh Allen, great. I'd be very, very happy with that. And then at 27, you know, you're looking at getting a top flight wide receiver. You're looking at getting a corner, a safety. Um, literally, there's so much talent there. You want to get guard help, you can get the one of the top guards in the draft at 27. Or if you are worried about gathering more picks for next year, you get that number four pick. That's a must. And then you get their second round pick, number 35 and a 2020 second. All possibilities. And the draft capital, as far as like Jimmy Johnson's trades chart, they, they, they're relatively close. So it really depends what the 49ers would want. If we want to make sure that we have that, we're still going to get two premium picks, whether it's 4 and 27 or 4 and 35. But getting that extra second round pick for next year would be huge. So I think that that is a possibility. It's something to look forward to. Um, so what I want to do now is just say thanks to our sponsor, Game Day Sports and Memorabilia. These guys are the absolute best. If you haven't already, head over there and let them know the 49ers Rush Podcast sent you. Uh, they are partners. They've been with us for a while. We really do appreciate all that they do. And if jerseys, helmets, all that stuff, the draft's coming up next week. You want to get that new 49ers jersey, that's the place to get it. So Game Day Sports and Memorabilia, head over there and check them out. Now what I want to do is let's go through the visits, and it is a long, long list. <laughs> you know, it, it's fun whenever you keep track of these, and the 49ers and all NFL teams don't just draft guys that visited, but it does tell you the type of player that they're looking for and the different positions that they are looking for. Okay, so these names doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that they will draft them, but it does increase and tell a story that, hey, these are the positions we're looking for. And I know somebody out there saying, well, we never had Mike McGlinchey in for a visit. And that's who we took at nine last year. You're correct. There's cloak and daggers and there's, you know, uh, trying to set teams up and bluffing. It's a poker game. But whenever you see, whenever we go through this list, you're going to see a type of player that stands out. So without further ado, it's a long list, and we're just going to start going through it. And it starts with the Senior Bowl. So Nasir Adderley, one of my absolute favorite players in this draft, safety out of Delaware. Uh, you know, he played at the Senior Bowl, and so they were able to meet with him privately there. Josh Allen, uh, they had him in for a private workout. The offensive, or, I'm sorry. Outside linebacker slash DN for Kentucky, you know, one of the top players in this draft. Now, there is some shade on that because Robert Sala, when he was coaching the Senior Bowl, he said, you know, right after Josh Allen withdrew his name from that, I really wish players would come here and compete and show us what they got. And so some players chose not to do that, and I don't understand why. So there's a little bit of <laughs> jealousy or I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But th there's a little bit of friction there from the start. So that, that makes it me kind of feel like Josh Allen's going to be towards the bottom of that tier. But they still had him in for a private workout. Blasson Austin, cornerback out of Rutgers. They went to his pro day and had him in for a private workout. So they had him twice. Marquise Blair, safety out of Utah. They met with him at the Senior Bowl. Nick Bosa, you know, my number one player, uh, met with him at the Combine. Went to his pro day and had him in for a private workout. The dinner and all that stuff was very well 
documented. Uh, you, you can't meet with the guy any more than you already have, so they seem to be very, very high on Bosa. A.J. Brown, wide receiver out of Ole Miss, uh, met with him at the Combine and had a private workout. He is the prototypical Kyle Shanahan corner, you know, insane three cone under seven seconds, which almost every wide receiver for Shanahan has that. But A.J. Brown, if he is there at pick 36, which I don't think that he will be, but if he is, A.J. Brown's going to be that pick. I, I truly do believe that. They might even trade back up for A.J. Brown in the end of the first round. But A.J. Brown, if he's there at 36, I think that's probably going to be a lock. I just don't think he lasts that long. Brian Burns. They had him in for a private workout. Again, my mindset is, you know, I have Burns ranked, I think, as my 13th overall player. That's a guy that if you do get this mega deal, multiple first rounds to trade up to that second spot, I think Brian Burns would be the pick if you're picking, you know, somewhere between 6 and 10. I don't think they'll drop back that far, but if they get a wow, holy freaking cow, here's three first rounders then I think it would be a possibility. LJ Collier, uh, another defensive end out of T, uh, TCU. Senior Bowl, they had a meeting with him. Deshaun Davis, inside linebacker off at Auburn, Senior Bowl meeting. Noah Fant, the prolific kind of move tight end out of Iowa. They had him in for a private workout. Holy cow. Um, you know, 49ers need another tight end. Kittle is amazing. Don't get me wrong, and I think he is the best tight end in the game already just because he's more well-balanced than Kelsey and Ertz. Both of those, Kelsey could block fairly well. Ertz hates blocking. I, I do believe that Kittle is a better blocker than both of them by far and just as good, if not better, at receiving than both of those guys. So we do need a number two tight end. Um, but we'll have to see what happens. Rashawn Gary, defensive end 3-4. I can't stand this guy. I do not want him on my team. Second round maybe, but we did have him in for a private workout. That scares the mess out of me. Cameron Glenn, safety out of Wake Forest. Uh, we had him for a workout. Carl Grandinson, who's a very fun player, defensive end out of Wyoming. We met with him at the Senior Bowl. Drake Glenlaw, outside linebacker, Arkansas. We had him in for a private workout. And... Again, we're about halfway through this list, so I'll pick it up a little bit. Therese Hall, inside linebacker, Missouri. We went to his pro day and met with him. Terrell Hanks, outside linebacker, New Mexico State. We had him for a private workout. Chuck Harris, defensive end, Buffalo. We had him for a private workout. Tim Harris, cornerback, Virginia. We met at his pro day. Uh, another wide receiver here, Nikhil, Nikhil Harry, wide receiver out of Arizona State. He is a stud. Again, one of those... Top flight wide receivers, that is just a size athleticism freak that's going to be going at the back end of the first round or early part of that second round. That pick 36, man, it, there's going to be a stud wide receiver there. I hope we do not trade up because somebody will fall. Somebody's going to be there. Trey Hayes, cornerback Appalachian State. We met with him in his pro day. Brandon Hittner, awesome name. Offensive tackle, Villanova, small school guy we had for a private workout. Anthony Johnson, wide receiver, Buffalo. Um, we met with him at his, uh, the Senior Bowl, which is interesting because he is very far away. He's kind of a bigger-bodied, tight-hipped, big wide receiver, uh, horrible three-cone, but he, he's a freak athlete. Just He's a bigger dude. Tyree Kennel, safety out of Michigan. We had him for a workout or evaluation. Drew Lewis, inside linebacker, Colorado, we had for a workout. David Long, outside linebacker, out of West Virginia, we met at the Senior Bowl. Daylon Mack, uh, kind of nose tackle guy. He would be playing that shade spot out of Texas A&M. We uh, met with a medical evaluation. Jimmy Moreland, cornerback out of James Madison, who I love this guy. He is a turnover machine. We had for a workout and a private meeting. So th that's one of those late round guys that just, man, he, he just screams everything that we would want in a corner. Bigger guy, uh, just turnover machine. Bobby Oak, Oak Eric, that's a fun name. Inside linebacker Stanford, we met with him at the Senior Bowl. Charles Ominahue, defensive end out of Texas, we met with him at the Combine. He's a Eric Armstead type D end, a strong side defensive end. Justin Phillips, inside linebacker Oklahoma State, Pro Day. Ja'Kai Polite, now this is interesting. You know, we met with him at the Combine, and he basically torched us to the entire media and saying the 49ers just 
talk trash on me the whole time they were in there and just kind of tore me down. And that was kind of the start of the fall of Ja'Kai Polite. I do not think that he is going to be a guy that John Lynch would want in our locker room. So Hunter Renfro, uh, the well-documented wide receiver out of Clemson. We met with him at the Combine. Derek Robertson, defensive end, Sam Houston State, we had for an evaluation. Deontay Roberts, inside linebacker, Rutgers. We met at a pro day. So as we keep going through these names, you can tell, man, there there are some positions that we are targeting. Uh, defensive end, outside linebacker, inside linebacker, wide receiver. It's constantly here those two, those those several positions mentioned over and over and over again. Um, so uh, Deontay Roberts, inside linebackers, Rutgers. We met as we went met at his pro day Debo Samuel wide receiver South Carolina we had in for a private workout a lot of people are on that Debo Samuel kind of hype train he is very similar to Dante Pettis insane separation speed shifty shifty guy uh would not be surprised if we took him with that second uh second round pick next up we got Chris Slayton defensive tackle Syracuse pro day Ray Smith, nose tackle. Again, we're trying to find depth at that interior spot. Boston College, uh, we had him for a private workout. Connor uh, Straken, inside linebacker, Boston College. We met at his pro day. Montez Sweat, again, one of those targets that if we do trade back, this is a guy that we could get out of Mississippi State defensive end we had for a private workout. Derek Thomas, cornerback, Baylor, private workout. DeAndre Tompkins, wide receiver, Penn State, we had for a workout as well. Cody Thompson, wide receiver Toledo, we had in for a medical. Trey Watson, inside linebacker Maryland, we had for a workout. Nasimba Webster, awesome name, wide receiver Eastern Washington, we had for a workout. Couple more, Ladarius Wiley, cornerback Vanderbilt, we had a we met with his pro day. Preston Williams, wide receiver Colorado State, private workout. Quinnen Williams, and this is another big one. We met at this pro day, we had a private workout, and met with him at the combine. So if you're keeping track, of the guys that we met multiple times, the ones that we've met with the most is Quentin Williams and Nick Bosa. And so may the debate continue. <laughs> Half of our fan base is going to be pissed, whichever one we do not pick. And it shouldn't be that way. They're both elite, and they're both fits with what we do defensively. Um, so anyway, take that for what you want. Kahari Willis, Safety Michigan State. We met with the Senior Bowl. Rennell Wren. Defensive tackle, Arizona State. We met at the Senior Bowl. Terry Wright, wide receiver, Purdue. Marquise Young, running back, Massachusetts, Pro Day. So that is the full list of people the 49ers have met with. There's still a couple more days, but visits will start to wrap up here in about two days. And it will be time to head to Nashville, which I will be there. I'm very, very excited. And I will be broadcasting live instant reactions and all those things so if you have not hit subscribe yet please head over and hit subscribe so you do not miss out it is going to be a very fun week i'm going to try to get back with you guys soon the schedule is about to be released which i want to stay focused on draft content but the nfl makes us do all these fun things year round so i will be back with an episode hopefully tomorrow or the next day breaking down the schedule and what that looks like for the 49ers so thank you guys stay strong one more week Talk to you guys later.